Good evening, everybody. My name is Betsy Fisher Martin, and I am the executive director of the Women in Politics Institute at American University. We want to welcome you all to our virtual series, Women on Wednesdays. We are glad to be back with you this semester. Uh, to those of you new to one of our events, WPI is a nonprofit and nonpartisan institute in AU's School of Public Affairs that aims to close the gender gap in political leadership. And we offer academic and practical campaign training, and we facilitate research and discussions like this on women in politics and leadership. So tonight, we want to take a closer look uh, at the woman Time magazine called the Chancellor of the Free World, uh, Germany's Angela Merkel, um, during her 17 years as Germany's chancellor and the most powerful woman in the world. She was, of course, much admired, but in many ways, we didn't know too much about her beyond her public persona until now. Um, so thanks to our guest tonight, uh, journalist and author Kati Martin and her insightful new book, called The Chancellor, The Remarkable Odyssey of Angela Merkel. Uh, it details Merkel's remarkable rise and her political brilliance, but it also sheds light on her upbringing, her leadership style, her strengths and weaknesses, and it tries to help us understand this famously elusive leader. Um, so, but before we just start our discussion tonight, uh, I wanna let everybody know that we are gonna save some time for questions. So you should see the, Q&A Zoom button at the bottom of your screen. I'm sure everybody's familiar with. Um, please do um, submit a question there. So we'll be sure to uh, get to those toward the end of our discussion. Um, but I want to welcome Kati. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Betsy. It's wonderful to be with you. And, and um, I, I'm, I'm just delighted. I'm, I'm actually a, a DC girl myself, GW <laughs> grad, sorry. And um, I, wish, I wish we were all there together. But, Absolutely. Uh, but this is uh, this is a great opportunity because uh, because indeed Merkel has many lessons to teach aspiring women politicians um, and men sure. too. I mean, her, her <laughs> style of leadership her style of leadership should be copied uh, by um, by anybody interested in power, how to get it and how to hold on to it. Exactly. Well, you use that the phrase remarkable odyssey in the subhead of the book, um, and it really is an unlikely odyssey in many ways. Um, you know, you talk about Merkel being a triple outsider, right? You know, she's East German, she's a scientist, and she's a woman in this male dominated government. Um, how was she able to Absolutely. achieve all this? And what is the picture of her that you want readers to really take away from the book? Well, um, she absolutely didn't want a book like this written about her. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't personal. It was just that she doesn't really think it's our business to know what she's like when she's not on the job. But of course, uh, she, she's now a historic figure. I, you know, she left the chancellery a few weeks ago and entered history and, uh, and, and left mm -hmm. her country transformed. And so we need to study her and we need to study her amazing ascent, as you said, as a triple outsider. And I wanted to pierce this mystery of how did she achieve this? And because she is so um, low key and super, to call her private is an understatement. She's, she's almost <laughs> paranoid in her need for, for, uh, for control. And, and, and a lot of that comes from her, um, her origin story. She, as you know, Betsy grew up in the police state of East Germany, the Stasi state, where you really couldn't trust anybody. You couldn't, you, and, and she did, she learned very early on not to trust. And as a result, um, she is the most private public person in the world, I would say. And uh, she, she believes that, uh, that, that she should be judged on what she achieved, not who, um, what she does in her, in her private life. Well, I, I was very lucky because um, I befriended um, some, of, some members of her inner circle. By the way, mm -hmm. her inner circle is tiny. 
It's like four right. people. It's so when Pres when President Obama went to say goodbye to uh, uh, to uh, the chancellor, they they became good good friends after four years of being in the trenches together. Sorry, eight years of being in the <laughs> trenches together. Um, uh, he looked around her office, her staff was there, and he said in amazement, wow, you guys still all here? Because, of course, our White House, you know, is a revolving door. Like a revolving door, her, yeah. Her staff, her staff has essentially not changed in 16 years. So so she, she, um, she she's the kind of person who, who, uh, who has a devoted and very loyal staff and not a single tell-all book has emerged from her 16 years. I mean, that is an astonishing fact for us who- It know, is. No, you know, no sooner are you, uh, do you leave the White House than, than you got your publisher lined up. Um, but um, th that kind of loyalty and respect for her privacy is, is truly remarkable in, in the social mediatic age. By the way, she does, she's not on social media, never was. The only time she, she even jumped on Twitter was because it was was during during her four toughest years, which was the the years of uh, Donald Trump's presidency, when she said the, the only way I can figure him out is to get on Twitter and follow his tweets. And even then, she couldn't <laughs> figure it. Well, take us back to I mean, you 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 talked about you know her growing up. I just want to share a, a couple of. Uh, photos from the book. Um, oh. Take us look at on the other side of the Berlin Wall and, and her childhood yes. and, and tell us about her parents. Yes, well, hugely important. And isn't she adorable? Um, so, <laughs> and this is a little older. So uh, she, was, she was raised in, and there she is with her two siblings. And by the way, these two siblings of hers have never given an interview about their famous wow. sister. Her parents never gave an interview. Her husband, no. Um, so this is quite, they all protect her. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's quite remarkable that, that she's been able to discourage <laughs> those nearest to her. Um, again, um, I, I, uh, I, found, I found a way in. So when you read the book, you'll see that, uh, that her iron her iron curtain uh, was was uh, mm -hmm. was not impenetrable. But so back to your question, Betsy, about how she grew up in in uh, in this very very sleepy idyllic corner um, of uh, of East Germany, where her father was a pastor, a very austere character, whose whose full approval she never gained. And by the way, her parents never voted for her, which I found quite remarkable. Uh, but they were they were social democrats, and she was a, a Christian democrat. Yeah. But anyway, um, so she she grew up always the brightest kid in every class. Um, she was uh, uh, East Germany's top Russian uh, scholar, so that was her first trip to Russia, where she would end up spending a lot of time in the in the the I would say most dysfunctional relationship of her tenure, which is with Vladimir Putin. They spent um, many, many years locked in in uh, in rooms together, um, but uh, we'll get to that in in a, in a while, I'm sure, since <laughs> it's making trouble for everybody right now. Everybody, and, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, so in in East Germany, she uh, she chose science. She could have chosen any number of things because she was. But I I interviewed her teachers. Going going back to high school and and uh, university, and they all said that that she had a photographic memory. She was she was extraordinarily uh, bright, but she chose science for the simple reason that living in a totalitarian state where where um, where the, the 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 state controls everything, uh, science was less uh, easy to manipulate. And so it was kind of a, a, a safe place for her to park her brain. But the minute the wall came down in 1989, and that was really when she first crossed over, she was 35 years old. And so she was you know, already launched on a, on a good career as a physicist, but uh, she took off her lab coat and went looking for a political party to join. And um, well, well, within within a year, 
She was in the cabinet as a, as a cabinet minister uh, in Helmut, Chancellor Helmut Kohl's government, first as, as there she is being sworn in. Mm -hmm. she, she, was, she was 36, but she looks a whole lot younger. She always she does. has this wonderful kind of androgynous look, um, very um, unself-conscious. She, um, she, she could care less about clothes until she was forced to, because uh, in politics, you have to care about clothes. And, and, but right. you, can, you, can, you can see this very earnest young woman who benefited from the fact that she was always underestimated mm -hmm. because she never showed her cards. And, you know, this is something that we can all learn from her is that um, she, she was, uh, look, there, there she is, Cole, her, her, her great mentor, who really launched her remarkable ascent. Um, and um, of course, when the time came, because she is among many other things, uh, not only a canny politician, but a ruthless one, when Cole became an embarrassment to the party, to the CDU, she was the one who ended her mentor's mm -hmm. career by writing a, a, a devastating opinion piece, front page, um, in Germany's best read newspaper saying, it's time to go. And that, uh, because, because he'd been caught in a kickback scandal and no one right. else in the CDU, all the big men, that surrounded Cole, none of them had the courage to do that, only Merkel. And, and she thereby uh, ended his, his, um, his political career and cleared a passage for her own. And, and she went into the cabinet, um, you know, as I think it was the Minister for Women and Youth, and you write about, you know, these were two subjects that she really didn't even care about. It was clearly a tokenism kind of position, but she was able to kind of seize that opportunity, right? Yes, yes. She always, here's another lesson. Um, uh, I should do a, a, a little book, uh, Angela Merkel's uh, 100 <laughs> Ways to, yeah, you know, one of those small manuals that, that you can buy by the cash register of Barnes and Noble. Um, because, because it really, I, I sometimes felt that I was writing the female equivalent of the prince, Machiavelli's the prince, mm -hmm. uh, call it the princess. Um, because um, among, among the many lessons um, uh, that I that that I took away from this, and I think hopefully others will as well. Is is that you know take the job even if it's not your dream job, and learn, observe, learn from the best, see how they do it, and and shield your ambition. Um, I think I think we no longer have to shield our ambition as much as 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 she did you know, in the, in the eighties and even nineties, but, um, but, but in a way it's always an advantage to, to catch people off guard and by, by mm -hmm. just learning and observing. And she, she was always on the lookout for, um, more experienced people, mentors. Um, she, the, my, my, uh, one and only dinner with her was because she wanted to meet my, my husband, the late diplomat, Richard Holbrook, mm -hmm. who negotiated the peace in, in uh, Bosnia. And so, uh, so she, uh, she arranged for a dinner and uh, alas, uh, the fourth person at that dinner, so it was me and, and, and Richard and, uh, and, and the not yet chancellor, she was then minister for women and, and youth. And I remember my husband teasing her saying, um, uh, Angela, you don't care about either of those. What's, what's <laughs> What's up with this? And and he kind of bridled at that teasing, um, but uh, I mean he was right. She was biding her time for much bigger things. But the other person at that dinner uh, was Susan Sontag, who who basically mm. never stopped talking. So so uh, so <laughs> Merkel learned nothing about negotiating from Holbrook. <laughs> But it was it was she remembered when when years later I I I 
started working on my book and, and uh, we had a, 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 an encounter in the chancellery. She remembered the dinner. So of course she would because she remembers everything. And she wouldn't necessarily speak to you for the book or were you able she, to get uh, the time? Betsy, she, she hasn't spoken to her authorized biographer who actually has given up yeah. to, my, <laughs> to my good fortune. Uh, we've become friends. No, she just uh, isn't interested in, in, uh, in a book that goes beyond the surface. And, and yeah. clearly yeah. This, book, this book does, but what she allowed which I think in some ways is more important than a sit down interview, which, which would get me nothing, just kind of boilerplate answers, was that she right. allowed me to observe her at work. And oh. she, she knew when I was in the chancellery and, um, yes. and, and didn't, didn't prevent me from spending time with her, with her very, very close aide, one of the three women who are in her inner circle, who yeah. uh, I spent, who, who we, we became friends actually. So she didn't, she didn't prevent that from happening. And I, I, you know, I had a couple of things going for me. One was that I'm a woman and she, she's a, she's a, a powerful woman who really likes women. And, you know, unlike mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher, who, who, you know, wouldn't be photographed mm -hmm. with another woman within uh, a mile. Um, um, she, she really, you can tell right away that, mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a connection. And also, I, I also grew up in a, in a uh, Soviet controlled state, Hungary in my case. And right. so there was, and she had read my, my uh, memoir of that childhood, Enemies of the People. So she knew that we had kind of similar backgrounds. My, my parents were political right. prisoners. Uh, hers were not, well, but, but same, same, same totalitarian system. I wanted to ask you on the earlier point, you know, you talked about sort of her quick rise in politics and you write about some of the grumblings that were going on at the time from men, no, no surprise there, right? That, um, you know, um, resentful of her, um, you know, tried to um, basically not welcome her. And at one point there was even a pact that some of the men had to creating this working group to exclude yes. her. Tell us about tell us about that and how if how she handled that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this was this was um, before she became chancellor. Before she mm -hmm. she really established her power. So she was she was kind of a um, uh, is still still uh, on the rise and and not not a, a force to continue with and it was so Bonn in those days was was the capital of Germany before unification and and um, you know they, the the only women in Bonn were were assistants to the men and so she she on her I remember uh, on her first um, trip foreign trip which was to Israel um, the the um, the official greeters um, asked her where's your boss instead of you know she was minister but right. nobody, I mean, it was such an unusual sight to see a powerful woman and she wept in public uh, at that humiliation. And, um, and, and that was uh, written about in the press and the lesson for her. And she, she admitted that she had to toughen up, that she had chosen this, this field and that humiliation was part of the, the, the price. And, um, and, but yes, there, uh, there were a lot of after hours Hours conversations in, in bars in the capital saying who's gonna who's gonna stop her who's gonna take her down and um, but she just she just plowed ahead and and uh, although she never actually torched her rivals nor did she ever go for the hose to put out the fires when they self immolated with their mm -hmm. with their extreme macho behavior um, when when she finally um, made, she came very close to becoming chancellor and her, her next nearest um, rival, Gerhard Schroeder, um, they were neck and neck. And, and it's a custom in Germany to have a, 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 a TV broadcast of the two finalists for the, for the top job. And, and, and Schroeder just uh, completely lost his, lost his head and said, I, I, I'm not going to form a government with this woman. And 
and you know just uh, bloviated, uh, really had a meltdown. And Merkel, and this is so typical of her, just complete self control. She just leaned back and let him bloviate on, um, and let mm -hmm. him um, basically do the job of self destruction. And then when 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 he um, ran out of steam, blustering, uh, mansplaining why why he was the one, uh, she leaned into her mic and said, the simple fact is that you did not win. And German democracy is not going to be tampered with. You know, in a dead calm voice, you know, that that level of composure um, and and her her self discipline never to be drawn, be it by Putin, who you know put her through all sorts of of uh, KGB uh, tricks to make her uh, lose her lose her cool. Um, Donald Trump, uh, um, you know, uh, who once threw a candy at her uh, to, uh, in the in the middle of a uh, NATO ministerial meeting and said, uh, here, here, something he fished out of his pocket, probably full of lint. Um, uh, don't say I never <laughs> gave you anything, Angela. And she, she, it was like she hadn't noticed all the other heads of state uh, in the room were horrified at this rudeness, but she doesn't let on. And of course that drives these macho guys crazy because the best way to deal with of a bully is, is to ignore um, their, their, their little hissy fit. And, you know, it seems, it seems um, they, oh, I love this picture. So this is, um, yeah. <laughs> this is the um, iconic yeah. picture uh, where, where she is, she is the only one who is really facing Trump, you know, who is sitting there with his arms crossed, and uh, and she is telling him um, that um, that the West it stands for something other than um, than trade deals. That we are a values based uh, group of nations, the European Union and NATO, and she's trying to give him a lesson in, in his which was a, a total waste of time as she discovered but uh, but she was she at that point um, what had had become really the leader of the West and and um, mm -hmm. of what there was of rule of law and and uh, you know nations that that um, stood together against against um, uh, both Moscow and 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 Beijing and by the way, she made more trips to um, to China than any other head of state. So, or, you know, she, um, <laughs> you know, Obama announced as much ballyhoo pivot pivot to Asia. She didn't make any such announcement, but uh, because she doesn't believe in in either making big announcements, uh, giving away what she's doing, or doesn't believe in speeches, um, as as a powerful. Uh, and, and she's a very poor speaker, <laughs> but um, but she she made more effort with uh, with uh, with Xi Jinping than uh, than any other Western leader, and and same with with Putin. It would be it would mm -hmm. be in, during the first Ukraine um, crisis of, in 2014 when Obama more or less officially made Merkel the 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 leader. Of the Western Alliance by by uh, letting Merkel negotiate uh, with with uh, Putin, which she did successfully, and, and stopped stopped the aggression and in, in froze it. There was uh, in place in 2015. I wanted to ask you about more about Putin in a second, but while we're on the matter of Trump, uh, you, you tell the story of how she when she first had to meet him she yes. tried to prepare herself and she yes. read art of the deal and poor thing she even watched like several episodes of the apprentice <laughs> for this as A well season of the apprentice can you imagine <laughs> how, how is that for dedication could you, would you <laughs> yeah and yeah but she must have been i mean how you know how did she think about him and how did she how did she deal with that well, she has a lot of Republican friends and mentors, yeah. Henry, Henry Kissinger uh, among them, Hank Olson, and uh, mm -hmm. 
another one, uh, people who, who caught her, her brightness early on and who really helped her along. And of course, George W. Bush with whom she got along very well. Um, and they all oh, yeah. advised her, they all advised her um, to, to uh, practice strategic patience, quote unquote. Um, well, that didn't work mm -hmm. too well. Um, they, they, she was told, well, he's a deal maker. So, you know, just make deals with him. Well, he wasn't interested in making deals. So she was basically um, holding back the tide um, and, and, uh, and, and praying for better days, uh, but um, did not make very much headway on, on, on big issues because that wasn't, it was, it, those were very tough years for her. Those, uh, and between, between Berlin and, and, and Washington, there was, there was, it was the ice age. Uh, but yet she decided but, to but run for course, that last. Um, yes, yes, yes. So she decided to stay and so, run because she knew that she needed to make that difference, right? Yes, yes. And in, in 2016, I referred to Obama's um, uh, visit to uh, his farewell visit to Berlin when he when Obama was leaving the White House, and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Obama is the one who who uh, broke the news of Trump's uh, uh, victory to Merkel. And uh, at that point, you're quite right. She was not. This was a 2016. Obviously, she was She 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 planned on. On, uh, le on retiring because I mean, after 12 years um, as head right. of state, she was, she was pretty exhausted. But, uh, but Obama said, you can't, you can't leave because then you leave the field to Putin and Trump. And so she agonized over that and, and, uh, and ultimately ran again. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and I think we should be glad that she did because because she, while, while uh, uh, Trump really gave Putin a, uh, a pretty easy ride, um, Merkel um, did not. With Merkel, Putin knows that he can't get away with his, with his usual tricks, you know, his fabrications, his deceits, his, uh, you know, he, he, he knows that she knows what, what he's about because they had the same training and, and, and because, you know, right. uh, she she knew what the KGB uh, what a KGB agent is about because she had uh, I, I write about um, her own encounters with uh, with with, uh, with the Stasi agents. So um, between Putin and Merkel, there is there is um, uh, a real understanding of the other. And uh, and and also a kind of a uh, on both sides a grudging respect of two time-tested uh, warriors. And it's very interesting to me that, that just a few weeks after Merkel's departure, Putin is pulling off this thing in, in Ukraine, which could end up mm -hmm. as, a, um, as, a, as a really dangerous moment for all of us. But I think he is testing the, um, the, the, the will of the West, if you will. Certainly um, he's testing, and you notice by the way, that Putin isn't at the table. Uh, it's his deputy foreign minister that he's dispatched uh, right. to, the, to the talks uh, on, on uh, Ukraine. Uh, with Merkel, it was always Putin. They, during, during the 2014, um, during his 2014 aggression in Ukraine, they talked 38 times, wow. times on the phone. And, 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 um, and of course, she, she, she was, she practiced a, 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 the most intense shuttle diplomacy and you know, I I I, uh, I describe her negotiate her negotiations with Putin and and the intensity of her focus, and and how mm -hmm. she said that that sometimes she didn't know the only way she knew the time of day was whether they were serving bread and jam or a roast. So it was like that. I mean, the question is working around the clock. Who does that now on behalf? of the rest of us, who will do that? Who will spend that amount of time and, and, and energy for an inch of ground? Because it's not like, you know, it's not like she, she got him to, to reverse course, but just to kind of, right. for her, a 
frozen conflict is better than armed conflict. For her, armed conflict is 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 failure. It's the failure of uh, when the when the tanks roll. That means diplomacy has failed. She's not a pacifist, but uh, but she hates war, and you know she's so so aware of Germany's terrible history, starting two world wars and then the Holocaust, that um, that she doesn't doesn't want um, Germany to be to be a, uh, a military power ever again. And interestingly enough, Betsy, when even, even though she was carrying the ball for the West in her negotiations with Putin, she always mm -hmm. took, uh, generally the, the, the French um, uh, premier, uh, Francois Hollande, and then later, um, later um, Emmanuel Macron with her, even though they, they were, she was, it was her, her show, but she yeah. never wanted to appear that this is Germany back in the saddle, back in the in the top yeah. uh, position. She she doesn't want that. Well, you also share. Let me share this famous photo because you tell the story in the book too of a the early an early uh, meeting with with Putin and you know uh, game he tried to play with her right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You can so. So because he did his, Putin did his homework and, and discovered that she's afraid of dogs and having been bitten. Um, and uh, so he unleashed his black lab Coney. And, and here you can see that she's frozen in place as, as Coney is sniffing around her. And you can, you can see the smirk on Putin's face, uh, the, the, the man spreading and the, and the smirking. And, but she didn't, budge and afterwards uh her her staff told me they were furious and she oh, I can imagine she, she was very cool and she said he's got to do this it's all he's got he's got he's he has got a terrible yeah. economy uh and and uh and and he and he's gotta he's gotta prove his manhood so everybody chill but you know <sighs> Who among us would have been that? I would have been pretty furious. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just she just she you know she she makes men seem um, not only not only uh, weak but kind of pathetic. Yeah, you know she did that with Putin. She did that with Trump too. That you know, she she just she she considers she considers the hubris as yeah. a male weakness. So look, I love this. That's a great photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, uh, her her she has the most expressive face because of course she can't she can't be blamed for her expressions as as she as she can for her for her uh, for her words. So, but but wow. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what sort of a caption would you? <laughs> exactly, caption would contest. You put under there. That one? Are you kidding me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 um, her her epic eye rolls when when Putin is or right. Trump or or Erdogan or Orban or you know she was not she was not blessed uh, in her sixteen years with with fellow heads of state. She had. She had a pretty tough bunch. I mean, she also had Obama, with whom, uh, with whom they 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 forged a after a rocky start because yeah. Was tell very, us about that because it was a little bit it was a little bit rocky at at, uh, yes. at a certain point. Yes. So she was she was a little uh, suspicious of him because because he he struck her as a young man in a hurry. And especially mm -hmm. when he asked to um, to speak at the most iconic corner of Berlin, mm -hmm. the Brandenburg Gate, uh, before he was even elected president, and she just thought, mm, no, <laughs> and and you gotta uh, earn that, yeah, yeah. So he he was he very graciously accepted uh, uh, her her uh, a lesser uh, venue. Uh, and blamed his staff for the overreach, and uh, and then then um, they really got to know and like each other, and then mm -hmm. came the low moment 
um, because uh, Edward Snowden's um, 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 wiki dump revealed that Obama had been tapping her cell phone. I mean, not Obama personally, but but his his national security administration, right. and uh, and you know the buck stops with Obama. So this created a a frozen year between Berlin and and Washington, and uh, and and Obama fell to into disfavor with Germans in general, um, because um, you know this is a this is Germany's a country that knows about uh, surveillance. And, uh, and this was pretty outrageous, but she got over it, got herself a new cell phone and she mm -hmm. had to get over it because the relationship between Washington and, and Berlin is the, is, is the foundation of German foreign policy. The NATO and the transatlantic relationship is the, is the bedrock of German foreign policy. So, you know, she is, uh, again, her, poli her politics, her ego-free uh, 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 style means that she isn't offended. She doesn't take stuff personally. This is another enormous takeaway is it's not personal. It's you are working for, for your people. It's not about you. It's about your country, and what, you know, it it mm -hmm. it seems like it should be obvious for our public servants, so called, to know that that it isn't about their careers. Um, but but uh, you know, um, it seems it seems to uh, we we need we we need examples like Merkel's to remind us that the people we elect work for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to compare the, the wealth amassed by Putin, who is said to be, I don't know, the third richest man in the world, and Merkel, who lives in the same rent-controlled apartment in, in the heart of Berlin, where, where yeah. she and her husband have lived for, I don't know, decades, um, and, and has, a, has a little cottage in the country as her country place, uh, she considers the accumulation of wealth as something that would that would just hamper you that would hold you back and and uh you know you can only imagine what she what she thinks of of the 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 splendor of of putin's palace or mar-a-lago for that matter so mm -hmm. you know um, 16 16 years as the most powerful uh leader in europe and not a breath of scandal these are pretty remarkable Pretty remarkable achievements when you consider uh, all the opportunities that must have come her way to acquire wealth, and right. and and uh, she just. And by the way, I don't mean to depict her as some kind of a straight laced Puritan because she's not. In <laughs> fact, in fact, I, I interviewed um, the governor of New Jersey, uh, Phil Murphy, who'd been ambassador mm -hmm. in Berlin, and he said first thing he said was, "She's funny as hell." And, <laughs> and it, it, and you know that's not the first thing you think of when you when you look at these pictures of Merkel, but she's right. got a very dry, very dry wit, and and her staff says that her impersonations are killers. Uh, <laughs> her impersonation of Putin, um, and one can only imagine Trump. Um, but um, you know that's how that's how she she uh, releases stress. She mm -hmm. also. Also, by the way, likes to sit up late with a drink or two and, uh, <laughs> and chat um, with, uh, with you know, interesting people who are generally not politicians. She likes, she mm -hmm. likes um, creative types, musicians. Um, Real people, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, she's, you know, she's, so, she's not who we think she is, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here, so let me get to a few of them. Um, this one is from Olivia, and she says, um, how did Merkel overcome, quote, the only woman in the room syndrome uh, that so many women in political uh, fields across the world have to face? Yeah, well, she certainly had that to face um, by always being better prepared than the boys in the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, making, uh, keeping, she 
building her ambition and and doing the job and um and um you know, she's got a little cube on her desk which says um a little uh, plexiglass cube which says there's strength in calm um so never losing it um and um you know she's just she's very impressive um after that, that early sign of uh, emotion when she cried on the trip to Israel where, where people thought she was somebody's assistant. Um, mm. She never again, she was never again seen doing that. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, she just, uh, she does the work. She does the work and, and she, she, it's this, you know, when, when, when asked who her role model is, she said, uh, myself as, uh, as often as possible. So this is a woman with a with a very uh, robust ego, I would say, but she's also as centered as an oak tree, right? Um, and and I and you write when she was even when she was even campaigning in the early days it, um, for her seat in the German Parliament, she was again interacting with people, going to the pub, like very yes. authentic. She likes she likes uh, people, but she doesn't, um, uh, you know. A lot of German uh, feminists um, mm -hmm. consider her not to have been a strong feminist, which is absolutely wrong. But she never, because mm -hmm. she never gave any big speeches about about women, uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she felt that it was obvious that she was a woman. She didn't need to say, "Women can do this." I am a woman, um, and she would always say, "I am Chancellor of all Germans." I am Chancellor. Mm -hmm. Chancellor of, um, of of even those who are opposed to immigration, which we we haven't um, gotten to that yet. But but I consider among her her really greatest legacies the fact that she allowed one million, mostly Middle Eastern, mostly uh, Muslim um, refugees into Germany, a formerly rather homogeneous. This uh, Christian white uh, country, and they this these million refugees have been largely integrated into German society, and and Germans have really um, enjoyed being on the right side of history for a change. So whereas other European countries were were throwing up walls and unspooling barbed wire to keep out the human horde, as they were called, um, Germany opened at its borders and, and Merkel in her very matter of fact, undramatic way said, uh, wir schaffen das, which means we can manage this. And indeed they did manage it. It's not even a big topic anymore. So, mm -hmm. so we do now have a template for how to deal with mass migrations, which are going to be with us for a long mm -hmm. time. And, you know, uh, wars and climate change will inevitably bring, and and uh, you know, I would just hope for um, that we would that, that we would um, study how she did that, and and that is, um, I I consider that, well, I have I have several uh, uh, nominees for for her her legacy, but that that I think yeah. is quite remarkable, given that it's she, given that it's Germany. You know, which had such a mm -hmm. terrible history, mm -hmm. and and you know, she transformed the country from being merely um, a um, a financial and an economic giant, which it was, and she has maintained right. that into being the moral center of, I would mm -hmm. say, the world. I mean, who who? What other candidates are there now? Certainly not us. And that's that's under Merkel, right? So, in addition to to demonstrate for all time, a woman's putting to rest forever, um, doubt about a woman's capacity to lead. She's done that. Plus, she's transformed Germany into, into this um, now multi-ethnic uh, culture that, that knows, knows how to deal with refugees at a time when most countries don't.
Let me ask you um, a question from Sydney. Um, she says, um, you know, you, we talked about um, Merkel not letting you interview her, um, but she would let you observe her. And uh, Sydney wants to know what's the one thing you learned from observing her that you don't think others would notice by briefly interacting with her? Oh, a lot. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I've alluded, I've alluded to to the fact that 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 she's that she's very witty, very funny, but she's also very warm. You know, um, yeah. The the um, her her uh, I I've actually seen her uh, tear up uh, twice from emotion. Um, once at uh, when she was talking to a a, a refugee girl who said. Uh, who hadn't yet been granted asylum in Germany, and uh, I do a whole chapter on on that, the um, because that's what kind of kind of brought Merkel around on 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 the need for a generous refugee policy. So so I would say the um, that she's very emotional, but keeps it. She she's genuinely emotional. She doesn't you know emote uh, uh, as a as a kind of a crowd pleasing thing. Um, a, a, a very a feeling person, I would say, mm -hmm. um, as well as a, a very humorous one, and the stamina. I mean, she's no kid. Uh, she's she's uh, sixty five years old, and she can go. She she gets off a flight from from Beijing um, to Berlin and goes straight to the chancellery. Um, wow. and, and puts in that full day. So, um, so these are things that, that I had a chance to observe and, and really admire. Um, she, she's worked very, very hard for, for the German nation. And, and she really, she's actually free now for the first time in her life because she certainly wasn't free for 35 years under the, the um, police state of East Germany, and then certainly not for 16 years as chancellor when, when she was always surrounded. Um, and, and now I think she's deserved, she, she, she has a well-earned uh, rest coming to her. Well, we do have a couple of questions about that too, on you know, yes, yes. what's next for her, what could she do, what other national, international role of importance could she have? Um, what are your thoughts on that? And then obviously some news today about her turning down a position. Uh, no surprise that she would turn down the, the offer of a, of a high, high position um, from uh, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General mm -hmm. of the UN, um, to, um, to, to, to really, really kind of hitting her sweet spot, um, which is, which is uh, nature and climate change and the environment in general, she, the things she really cares about. And, and because her 16 years as chancellor were kind of a rolling crisis, you know, there was, there was the financial mm -hmm. uh, uh, meltdown, um, there was the refugee crisis, there was uh, the terrible nuclear explosion in Fukushima, which led Merkel to take Germany out of uh, off nuclear power also very controversial. And then of course came the rise of, of populism um, in Europe and in the US. Uh, all of, so, so she, in, 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 in 2019, in her annual uh, speech to the nation, she announced that, that she would spend the remaining two years um, in office on climate. And six weeks later, COVID hit. And she again right. became a crisis chancellor oh, with yeah. managing COVID, mm -hmm. which which uh, which she did as well as as well as uh, anyone. Um, you know, it's it's not a it's not a virus that anybody can can really you know keeps keeps mutating, so it's hard to control. But but so so. Uh, so I would I would predict that after a good after a, uh, a good and well-deserved uh, rest in her in her um, extremely private little little cottage a couple of hours from Berlin, with her husband, who by the way is as as uh, mysterious as she is, or more so. He's known as the Phantom. Yeah, tell us tell us about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, 
she she decided early on not to have children and because she did not think that she could combine uh she said marriage won't change um my my life in politics but children would and because she she mm -hmm. approaches things in in such a you know uh thorough way it's she would not have been a a, a, a casual mom who would park her kids with with a nanny mm -hmm. and she knows that about herself it, it was all or nothing so so that was a conscious choice on her part um her husband is is a is a uh, very distinguished um scientist uh quantum uh chemist with a big career of his own who very rarely accompanied her on trips i write about a few times when when he did uh, notably a, mm -hmm. a wonderful wonderful visit to the to the bush uh, 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 ranch right. in Austin, uh, Texas. That was one of their best trips. Um, but uh, he's known as the phantom. Her husband is known as the phantom of the opera because uh, A, <laughs> he loves the opera and B, he's like a phantom. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, he, his, his, his uh, usual line is, um, I'm a scientist, nobody cares about me. Well, yeah. uh, that's not quite true, but anyway. Um, and he's her he, second um, husband. He, her they, first husband was together. a scientist also, yes. right? Yes, but that was really a, a kind of a starter marriage. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. She kept his name though. She kept, right. Merkel was well, yeah. They married. They married right out of university, and and she, uh, she admits that it was because everybody was getting married, and because you could you had a better chance at getting a good apartment if you were married. <laughs> and uh, it was a it was an as undramatic a, a divorce, she took the washing machine, he got the couch. Um, and uh, <laughs> apparently he still has that couch. <laughs> I don't think she has a washing machine anymore. But I, I love the fact that that last year a reporter asked her if if she had smart machines in her in her apartment, you know, the kind that or um, this reporter said, Do you do you do you have machines that 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 operate without um, you? your supervision or or do you work your own uh, washing machine and she said actually my husband does the laundry you know without i mean <laughs> it was like so cool that that this powerful woman um you know like the rest of us divides chores um between herself and 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 her husband um and didn't think it was a big deal and also so she does her own grocery shopping and throughout her 16 years, she did her own grocery shopping. So this is not mm -hmm. an imperial uh, chancellor. And that's another that's another um, great takeaway for for the rest of us is, you know, however high you rise, you know, she she never lost uh, she never lost the the, uh, the 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 talent for being normal. Right. Well, I think that's a, a perfect way to end, Kati. Um, and I would mm -hmm. recommend this book to anybody. It's a terrific, terrifically laid out. It's it's um, actually a super interesting read. And um, congratulations on all its all of its success. And thank you really so much, appreciate Jesse. being here with us tonight to uh, take us through some of it. Well, it was my pleasure. Really fun talking to you. And and uh, I, I'm sorry that we we didn't have a chance for more questions from. I know we got it. We got in a lot. So I thank everybody uh, for sending in good, questions. Good, good. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, okay, so I'm yeah. glad that we covered all that territory. But you we did, did. A, we a did. Job. You made it really, really fun and easy, and uh, and really appreciate appreciate you having me on. This is this is absolutely the right forum for uh for this book uh and i hope everybody i hope everybody uh reads it and and learns her tricks absolutely well um thanks everybody for watching and i want to let everyone know too um we have another program coming up on february 2nd uh with uh, gretchen carlson who many of you know from her time uh, at fox and julie rosinski they have started a nonprofit. Uh, called Lift Our Voices that 
yeah, aims to end the silencing of harassment victims through uh, arbitration and non-disclosure agreements. So they're going to be here on February 2nd to talk about their initiative with that. And we hope you can join us. Um, you can find the registration. Uh, hopefully uh, someone from our team can put drop the registration into the chat or you can uh, just go to our website and you should be able to find it there. But um, thanks everybody for spending some time with us. And thanks again, Kati, and um, hope to see everybody soon. Appreciate it.